Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and today I want to talk to you about adrenal fatigue and insulin resistance. The reason I, why I want you to watch this video is because if you're suffering with an adrenal fatigue problem, I'm going to explain to you that you more than likely have an insulin resistant problem. And I just wanted to go over a case study that I had the other day where um, a patient doesn't look like they have insulin resistance on the surface from the laboratory ranges, but it looks like they have insulin resistance from the relative range or the functional ranges or the real ranges. And so uh, I'm going to explain to you how to uh, figure out if you are dealing with an insulin resistant problem and then I'm going to give you action steps to what you need to do to be able to figure these things out. You may be able to watch this video over and over again and write down these ranges here so that you have them for your own records. So anyways, let's talk about this. Um, patients typically um, have blood tests done where it will go over their glucose, go over their hemoglobin, their triglycerides, their cholesterol, and then you want to look at their cholesterol to HDL ratios. And so in this instance, the green values are representing the lab ranges and the black values are representing the healthy ranges. So the, the lab ranges, as we, as we will remind you, are what the lab comes up with for the average of those who have taken the blood test the year before. And so typically the less than healthy population goes for a lot of blood work. They set the ranges at really high and really low. And if you're not sicker than they are, you're told that you're normal. And the example I always use is if I have kids that are in high school and they're getting a C plus on the test, they are told they are normal. It's not until they get an F on the test that they they're told that they need extra help and that the that their 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 grade is actually flagged. It's the same thing. And I tell I'll tell patients it's kind of like doing this and looking into the ocean and saying uh, I don't see any boats in the ocean, so no, there's no boats. And then you do this, and you look, and you see there's boats over here and over there, and you're missing the whole clinical picture. So for example, I have a patient, 79 is the glucose level. And so from a lab range, 65 to 99, they're right in that range. They're told that they are normal. However, from a healthy range, 85 to 99. So that tells me that this patient more than likely is reactive hypoglycemic. This would be considered functionally low. He is functionally low. So from a lab range, they're normal. From a healthy range, they're not in the healthy range. They're a little lower. Um, cases like this is typical an adrenal-based case where they're not eating healthy meals frequently. Their blood sugar drops too low because cortisol is not stimulating a breakdown of blood sugar, and then they crash. They get shaky, lightheaded, and jittery. And incidentally, someone who has low blood sugar has just as much a chance to become insulin resistant as someone that has high blood sugar because they lead to the same road. The other thing is A1C. So you can see that A1C from a lab range is 4.8 to 5.6 and 4.8 to 5. So those ones are actually the same. And in this case, the person was in range. So typically, when they go see their doctor, they'll say, you know what? You are not insulin resistant because you, glucose is normal and your, your hemoglobin is normal. And the patient symptoms don't match necessarily their objective testing. So they do get shaky, lightheaded, and jittery if they don't have a meal. They crash in the middle of the day. When they eat a meal, they feel more energized. They, get, um, they crash after a meal because they just get so tired. They're showing all signs of insulin resistance, but they're not crossing over the edge. Where we can get some more information is by looking at their fatty acid levels. So for example, triglycerides were 155. And from a lab range, they should be lower than 150. So he was actually laboratory high. Um, from a healthy range, 75 to 100. So that one was actually flagged on the test. LDLs, 120. From a lab range, it should be lower than 130. So that wasn't flagged. However, from a healthy range, it should be lower than 99. So that was functionally high. Cholesterol. Cholesterol was 240. And cholesterol is typically the only lab ranges that you see is a little, a little um, narrower, meaning 100. Lab ranges say that you're okay if you're at 101. 
Um, whereas functional ranges say you have to be at about 150 or higher. There is a problem of having too little cholesterol. Cholesterol makes your hormones. And if you are on cholesterol-lowering medication and you are lowering your blood values less than 150, then typically that's going to be as much problems as having high blood uh, cholesterol. Here's, so all of these things point to an insulin-resistant problem, meaning um, their triglycerides and their cholesterols and their LDLs are very, very high. What happens is when we have a glucose um, problem or an insulin problem, insulin is not doing a good job of getting sugar out of the bloodstream. So what happens to that sugar is it needs to, be go, it needs to go somewhere, and it's converted into triglycerides, cholesterol, LDL. So that's a good indication that that person can potentially have an insulin problem. But here's where it really is driven home, is at the cholesterol and HDL levels. So when we're looking at the ratio from cholesterol to HDL, on a lab test, it says you should be below 5.0. However, from a functional range, it should be below 3.1. In this case, it was 4.4 which means their cholesterol to their healthy cholesterol is way too high. That is a sure sign of insulin resistance. And that has a lot to do with adrenal problems because when we have adrenal problems and we are depleting ourselves of energy, your mitochondria say, hey, I'm not really concerned right now with handling blood sugar. When insulin levels get so high because of high carbohydrates and sick mitochondria, then what happens is it's an energetic process to get rid of insulin. You, your body has to produce proteins to transport insulin out of the bloodstream and get it broken down, and that requires a lot of energy. So um, when that happens, potentially you may be balancing your glucose and your hemoglobin, but your fatty acids are not being balanced, and that's a sure sign of insulin resistance. So um, just wanted to open up your eyes on that because insulin resistance is very, very common with adrenal fatigue problems. And typically you're going to miss it because your doctor is doing this and they're not looking at the wide ranges. So, um, so what would you do about this? Well, number one, we would try to control your carbohydrates. Uh, number two, you would try to support your mitochondria. Uh, number three, you would tra probably try to do some adaptogenic stuff. Number four, you would want to try to relax and be more in a parasympathetic state. Number five, you would probably want to make sure you're figuring out what the major stressor is. Like, does this person have a methylation issue? Do they have a toxic burden? Do they have an infection? Are they taking medications? What are all the things that are driving this, and why are these clues showing up? And that's the thing, is we don't want to be failing a grade before we realize we need extra help. So anyways, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Your Adrenal Fix. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up, a like, a share, a comment. Uh, go, share, go see my Facebook page at Adrenal Fatigue Recovery or go check out my blog at adrenalfatiguesociety.com. Look forward to helping you in your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.